Perfect with no flaws at all Are the laws of a love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We praise Him And we ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace and send His blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His companions, his wives and all those who follow them on their righteous path until the day of recompense Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to this episode. I'm your host, Abu Musa Abwajdi Akari. To my right is uh, Brother Abdurrahim Green, and uh, Brother Salim Al Amri, and Brother Asim Al Hakim. And we will be discussing a very hot topic. There's no room for celibacy in Islam, number one. The Prophet ﷺ made it very clear to Uthman ibn Mat'ul. Okay? He said, there's no celibacy in Islam. That's number one. The marriage, it is the one of the Sinan al Fitrah. Sinan al-Fitra means the things that are natural and innate, and it, they are obligatory, the Sinan al-Fitra. So we have to understand this. The prophets and messengers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them with their, their examples. They have families, and they had progeny, children, offspring. The Prophet sallam, was encouraging the, us to reproduce and to have more children. So all these things come together they give us the idea about the ruling of the marriage in Islam. The issue that the jurist discuss, is it obligatory or is it recommended? They are discussing this issue from fiqhi perspective. For example, a person who has no time, like many of the Imams, Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Nawawi, they had no time for this. Either they are behind bars or they are Fight. behind uh, books. <laughs> behind the books and teaching the Ummah. Okay? Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he said, I fear that I stay one night without a wife, without being married. Many, many of the Salafs, he would come, maybe this seems, I mean, harsh, okay, to the sisters. Okay, he just buried his, his wife and he's getting married. He was afraid to meet Allah, not marry. Exactly. So there's no room for celibacy in Islam, based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And here I would like to encourage the youth, actually, and encourage the parents to help them, their children, to get married as soon as possible. For example, especially the girls. Because soon you will reach the monopause. And that's at 40 average, normally. It will take 15 years. Okay. Imagine, because you see, subhanAllah, Allah the Creator knows. You have repository, store, stock of eggs in your ovary. And every month you are losing one. So a time will come when that will be depleted. You don't have any more. This is a sheikh and also it's a problem that we found, not only in the West as well, I think even in some of the Islamic countries where girls are pursuing an education, exactly. they're pursuing a career, they reach 25, 27, 32, and they are now finding it impossible to get married. And what you said to make haste is actually this is a hadith. The Prophet wasallam said that the haste is from shaitan, except in how many things? But one of those things he said was to get your daughters married. So hastening to get your daughters married is something the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us just wanted to add to that what you were saying Shaykh. that's true subhanallah I received many calls okay from brothers okay I want I'm looking for a sister to marry say, okay we have list of sisters alhamdulillah he said uh, tell me what is the age he said uh, 16 18 maximum 19 tell him she's in her 20s I thought you know he's like my mom He's too old for him. It sounds harsh, but this is the Yeah, this is the reality. This we have to face it. So the sister when the suit right partner comes, the righteous, pious comes, even if she hasn't finished her education, her college or her university. She should not reject, she should not uh, say no. 
Okay, we will, will accept. Look, sorry, for, we will have to address this issue, uh, the idea of uh, rejecting the qualified the spouse or the potential spouse, and uh, that is a very prevalent, uh, you know, phenomena amongst the people because of uh, nationalism and tribalism and different things of the sort. But I think since we spoke about marriage and we uh, addressed some of the important uh, aspects of it, perhaps the benefits of marriage. So the audience will actually can get familiar with what we're saying, because people say, "What is it? What's in it for me?" Okay, so I get married. They only think of the negative aspect, responsibility, rent, children, schooling, education. I mean, it could be a headache unless one is prepared. But what are the benefits which would make one look forward uh, to getting married? Well, there are a lot. How many? Plenty, man. I just, you know, the, the sky is the limit. Among them, see, if you look at the Quran and the Sunnah, like the Shuks just mentioned, that it is the Sunnah of not only our Prophet Hassan, but all the Prophets of Allah. And Allah Azza mentioned that, that, O Prophet of Allah, we had not sent a messenger before you except giving them wives and offsprings. And all the messengers of Allah were married, without exception, except maybe for Jesus. And we don't know if he was married or not. We know that he ascended to the heavens, but we definitely know that he will uh, descend at the end of time, and he will have a wife or more, and he will have offspring. So if you look at Nuh, it's stated in the Quran that he was married. And Ibrahim had two wives. Ismail, Sulaiman, Prophet Solomon had a hundred wives. And in the authentic hadith, he once told his companion that tonight I will sleep with all of my wives so that each one of them will conceive a warrior that fights for the cause of Allah. And his companion said, say inshallah. He didn't say, inshallah. And we know the rest of the story. So it shows you that the objective of getting married is not only for the sake of fun. Look at his objective, like Umar's objective. Umar, when he married Umm Kalthum, the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was like in his 60s or, or so, and she was a young girl. And Ali told him, why do you want to marry such a young girl? And he said, Wallahi, I don't need marriage, and I don't re desire it, but I'd like to have this bond between me and the Prophet ﷺ so that I may have one of my offspring to be related to the Prophet ﷺ. So, and this, this is one of the advantages of getting married. Didn't Zakariya ﷺ, from the very initial steps when he asked Allah for a dhuriya, he made it dhuriya saliha. Zakaria and Ibrahim no. as well. They all supplicated for uh, a righteous, uh, righteous uh, yes. offspring. Not only that, Akhi, when you get married, you have in-laws. And I know that in, <laughs> in, in some <laughs> countries, <laughs> everyone is, is, is grimming now. So it's like, oh, in-laws. Yeah, I, I know. Mm. I've tried it personally. I have, with the grace of Allah, two wives. And I have two families related to me, in-laws. Mm. And I feel proud. I'm related to that family and to this family. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ had so many in-laws. Why? So that he can get this bond and connection with all the tribes, with his companions, and they feel... Strengthen the brotherhood. And they become family. SubhanAllah. So this is one of the advantages of getting married. As far as fornication and adultery, the comfort you get out of marriage is second to none. One would say, listen, come on, Akhi, if I get my black notebook and I check into my addresses and my exes, I'm in heaven. I have so many girlfriends. I've got a brunette, I've got a blonde, I've got this, I've got that. Restricting me to one wife, this is hell. Wallahi, it is not. There was this professor from Otago, Wellington, and New Zealand University. And she made a survey over 35,000 cases in tens of, of countries. And she concluded, she's not a Muslim, the doctor. She concluded that marriage reduces stress. Now every married person says, excuse me? No, mm. it, so this is true. It reduces stress. Mm. It reduces mental problems. And it produces comfort in the house. Those who yani, have illegal relationships, who fornicate, who have you know, relationships here and there, they're not comfortable. 
even if it's a one night stand, the amount of pressure mentally and physically is unbelievable, unbearable. Where a person and his wife, they're having the life of their, yani the best time of their lives. A way of, a way of life. Is it safe to say then, when a viewer right now is listening and he hears these words, that according to the study, there's less stress, uh, less problems, and, and the person feels otherwise. Can we safely say that's because we as Muslims, or some of us, have misunderstood the nature of the marriage relationship, the contract. We haven't applied the sunnah in our marital life. Therefore, we are not uh, benefiting. We're not actually benefiting from it as we're supposed to. That's why we have stress, that's why we have problems, because the whole marriage idea and what it's supposed to bring about uh, some of us might have failed in identifying the critical points in it and we have, we've turned our marriage into uh, perhaps more like what we see, what people see on TV if they do watch the, you know, the various channels. And so this is part, part of the reason. Do you think that it's, we failed in understanding the nature of marriage? The way I see it, and maybe the brothers can comment on it, that those who suffer in their marriages, they suffer elsewhere, in their profession, in their relationship with their siblings and friends and wives. <laughs> it, it cascades down. Why? Because we have a problem in identifying the rights and responsibilities. We know our rights very well. We always fail to recognize our responsibilities to the others. And that's why problems happen in marriages. But this is not the right. Sheikh, one of the things I'd like to point out without going, because actually, uh, this topic that I'm going to introduce itself could be a whole, we could spend a whole another series talking about this. But um, when we say marriage, I think it's very important and for all the listeners to understand something very important here. We're talking about Islamic marriage. And so when the woman is w observing hijab properly, not just wearing a cloth on her head, but she understands the spirit of hijab. She understands what hijab really means. You know, when the men and women are not mixing freely, when the husband is lowering his gaze, when he, his wife knows that she will not be in a room alone together with a strange woman, she will, he will not be shaking hands even with a strange woman. So when you find these etiquettes are observed, there is trust. The man can trust. This is one of the most beautiful things I found about Islam. I can't tell you the fact that I can leave my wife and not even have to worry one single little bit that she is going to be treacherous to me because she will not, apart from anything else, she will not even put herself in a situation where that can happen. And the same with me. When I'm traveling, she can trust me because she knows that I will not even put myself in the situation where that can happen. I'm sure you will find in marriages where there is tension, I almost can guarantee you will find there is some free mixing taking place. There is this lack of trust because there are things that are taking place that are not within the teachings of Islam. The trust begins to break down. The jealousy begins to creep in. And this, by the way, you were talking about, you know, the list of the girlfriends and all the boyfriends in the case of the sisters. Yeah. This is something that with the whole girlfriend boyfriend relationship is one of the most horrific aspects of it. It is the jealousy. It, it, no, it's the fact, not just the jealousy, then you have to kill your jealousy. Because for you to feel jealous, it's like somehow not cool to be jealous. And you know, the whole time you're fighting your nature, you're not living, it's not peaceful. You know, okay, so you get a few minutes of enjoyment, of sexual enjoyment, but the rest- few minutes is a lot. Yeah, mashallah, it depends, you know. Whatever it may be, half a night, a few minutes, depending. You know, but the point is, it's brief. Compared to the amount of suffering that you have, this is the point. And no affection, no, uh, no repose, Very no limited. Love. And, and, and honestly, anyone who experiences the way in marriage you can develop a relationship, even sexually, it cannot be compared. How can you, in having sexual enjoyment is something that takes effort and experience to know what makes your husband happy, what makes your wife happy, how do you know each other, how do you know what pleases each other. This is something that takes time and experience. You can't experience this in a one night stand. True. You can't experience this in a one night stand. I feel so sorry for these people who think that sexual 
the intimacy is about this one night. They, will, they, never, they never really know what true it's sexual an enjoyment act. is. It's an animal act. Yeah, and this is the difference. In marriage, you, subhanAllah, has so much, and this is barakah, this is the blessing of Yes, marriage. exactly. Yeah, this is the just, uh, you just said it, it is a blessing from Allah. Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, among his signs that he created for you, mates, partners. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The purpose of the marriage, so that you find this sakina, Repose. this serenity, this calmness, tranquility. this tranquility, this inner peace. Absolutely. That is really, you come tired from your work, eight hours or twelve hours on your toes, your boss is shouting at you. And you go home, now this is your paradise on earth. And this is my, I invite every sister to make her home, paradise on earth. Your husband is longing for that. Make him, he misses you. He calls you from the office, I miss you, darling. What if he doesn't? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> yes, See, no, 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 no. Believe me. So we men have we to We need do to something. work on this. Yes. We need to work on this. You need it. Men and women. We, both, of course. Yes. And women in particular, they like to hear. You will be shocked maybe sometimes or surprised that if your partner, your wife comes to you one day, stands in front of you like this, do you love me? And you go, uh huh? The poor girl is, wants to hear it from you. She wants to hear from you, I love you, all these things. They are in need of that. So this sakina, calmness. So your part, she receives you at the door, hugging you. She already did had daily chores. She already took a shower. Not that she meets you with all the problems. Yeah. Children did this. You're tired, you had enough already. So that's where you find sakina, calmness. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّ وَرَحْمَةً This put underline, underline this. He puts this mawadda, affection, and mercy. It is both mercy and affection. Subhanallah, it is a miracle. A woman you didn't know, we know in Islam, know this dating stuff and all that, we know that. You propose, you see the girl maybe once or twice, and that's it. Till the night, after the wedlock. The moment the wedlock is signed, you feel he is part of you. Who has put this? It is Allah subhanahu. And I think this is something, Sheikh, you know, this, that you hear people talk about barakah. Yes. You know, and it's uh, intangible, undefinable, unquantified. You can't measure it. Maybe you could measure it scientifically. I have no idea. But how is it? Huh? You can measure it financially. Yes, you probably, I mean, I don't think anyone's tried. But there is this amazing thing that something that, you know, something small, a plate of food, for example, that normally you would expect would, would feed, you know, four or five people. It feeds 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. How is this? And it's the same with marriage. There's this blessing in it that something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala special gives it to it because you are doing something to please him because this is halal, you know, subhanallah. And this reminds me of, the, I love this saying of the Prophet sallallahu when he's saying that you get rewarded for having intimate relations with your wife. Yes, subhanallah. And they say, Ya Rasulullah, we get rewarded for that. You can imagine this, we get rewarded. He said, if you did it in a haram way, would you not get punished? This is so beautiful. And this is only for those who are married. Imagine yes. when a rich person he wants to do Don't pick on the British people. This no. is the only way yes. for him to get this form of worship. Yes. Otherwise, if he's not married, he's not going to get this charity. Yes. Not yes. only that, when you talking about intangible mm. benefits, the Quran tells us that it is tangible. And so many times, if you remember if we, when we spoke about this in the car, so many times people say that, Akhi, financially, I'm unable to get married. Yes. And we put burdens. Allah mm -hmm. says in the Quran, mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. they were to be poor, Allah will grant them from His grace. So this is a promise. 
because the, the, the beginning of the ayah, let those who are unmarried get married. You should do this. You should work to do this. And in conclusion, Allah says, if they are poor, if they were to be poor, Allah would grant them from his favor. So don't think that it is you that has all the abilities. So many times we depend on ourselves. We trust our abilities. We have reliance on what we know. And we forget and neglect Allah Azza wa Jal. Not knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal got us out of our mother wombs, knowing nothing. And then he himself Azza wa Jal granted us the hearing, the seeing, and the ability to comprehend. So originally, all my certificates, all my knowledge, all my health and power and wealth is nothing. It's all a gift and a bless from Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, do not think of marriage as an obstacle. Think of it as a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not only that, He will help you. The Prophet said, Alayhi wa Sallam, Three, Allah Azza wa Jal has pledged to support them. And one of them is a man seeking marriage to preserve his chastity. And Sheikh, you know what now what's happened is you've answered the, the sort of question I posed in the beginning about how when marriage is half of the deen and the deen is about, you know, worshipping Allah, and worshipping Allah is about knowing Allah. And you have just now exactly articulated. Because what have we learned from marriage, from all of this, that Allah is the provider? Uh, I mean, that's, subhanAllah, I have uh, eight kids in my house. People out there, people say, oh, how, how can you have eight kids, this and that, how do you afford this and that? Allah is the provider. You learn this, you, learn, you, you know this is not from yourself. This is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is exactly, this is, really what we find in marriage as well, this beautiful connection we make with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. It seems then that we have to, uh, as Muslims, bring a relation between spirituality, faith in Allah, and marriage. They go hand in hand. And if we were to focus on one without the other, there would be some defect. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, we conclude this particular episode. However, this will not be the last. We will be discussing more on the issues of marriage, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, in the next episode. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.